Hi all, let's look at another amazing game of the British Super Grandmaster Michael Adams. And this is the game from the British Championship Round 8 against Richard Pert. Richard Pert on the ECF grading scale is currently around rank 22. Uh, he has a brother Nicholas Pert who's actually ranked 7 right now, around 7. So very, very strong, the Pert brothers. So let's see what happened in this game. Michael Adams playing white plays e4. We have the Karakhan, d4, d5, and now e5. So this was popularized actually by Nigel Short. The short variation is basically the intention to play knight f3 and bishop e2, a short move for the bishop instead of bishop d3. Often uh, in the past, this bishop would exchange off and black would get good light square play, for example, on c4 and f5. But the strategy's changed. And here, a trendy move for black is actually c5. So, yes, hitting white's pawn chain immediately. We see knight f3, knight c6, and now an aggressive move, c4. So, creating a lot of central tension early on in this game. We see c takes d4, knight takes d4. If in this position, uh, instead of c takes d4, knight takes d4 here, white ends up with a very strong position indeed. This looks quite miserable for black with that uh, light square bishop hemmed in. And on d takes c4 in set, instead, d5 is strong. This is going to be actually uh, a very big advantage. Another alternative, bishop g4, uh, c takes is good here. Allowing this continuation, this is strong for white. So just from an interesting theoretical perspective, white can end up uh, getting big positions in quite a few continuations here. So I think this is quite a critical test, c4. So c takes d4, knight takes d4, e6. We have here knight c3, and now bishop c5. And now white takes on c6. You might think this is a little bit counterintuitive. Isn't it bringing a pawn towards the center and giving black a potentially active b file? The thing is here, yeah, this bishop could be a problem bishop, but in particular, c5 could be of interest for white to try and take over later with moves like knight a4 and bishop e3 to try and get a grip on c5. We see bishop e2 here. This is a bit unusual. In uh, More commonly, queen g4 is played. For example, knight e7, and maybe this is the kind of preparation that Richard Pert had in mind, a sharp kind of gambit to generate some counterplay. Uh, for example, this gets a bit uh, complicated, this style of position. But yeah, bishop e2 was played, leaving the queen on d1. We have knight e7, white castles, knight g6. And now, yes, this grip on c5 with knight a4 the bishop goes to e7 if the bishop had gone to b6 then c takes e takes queen c2 white has some play against the c6 pawn or has a small edge here so bishop e7 we have f4 and the knight is kind of restricted here black castled bishop e3 and white can just build up with queen d2 and maybe put some the rooks on c1 and d1 here. It's a very nice position. Black seem to borrow from king safety now by playing this move f6. This does weaken the king side and potentially light squares. It seems at the moment there's a kind of dark square strategy, but light squares could also be an issue for black if not careful. As an alternative, if black didn't want to play f6, a5 as an example, queen d2, uh, this this kind of situation where white can build up and play knight c5 might be a safe way for white to try and play. And knight d7, for example, is winning an exchange as an example. Uh, so here, this is too risky with this f-pawn move because taking and then queen b6, uh, black should be fine there. Uh, so anyway, f6, we have e takes. Bishop takes f6, and it's as if black's activated a little bit here, the pieces, but now bishop d3 is played. And we see now after d4, in fact, 
black is volunteering light square weaknesses. Uh, we have bishop d2, e5, so more light square weaknesses are being volunteered. Is this double edged? We have a very aggressive move, queen h5 now. So kind of pinning the knight to h7. e takes, and now bishop takes f4, queen d7. Uh, clearly, if taking just for the record, that does hit the queen, but check and rook takes f4. This is uh, going to be very dangerous for black indeed. Checkmate could be the result quite quickly. So queen d7 looks as though queen g4 is an interesting intention here to play queen g4 with this move. This uh, is reacted to with h3. If instead of queen d7, uh, well, we've looked at uh, the alternative. Yeah, so h3, uh, queen f7 now is played. Okay, so in this position, now knight c5, and all of a sudden, this knight, it, it looks as though the c8 bishop, which was a big target in a lot of alpha zero games, is feeling uh, the pain here. So, uh, yeah, positionally, it looks as though white's getting. It's it's pretty dominant position. The bishop on d3 is is very very strong as well, kind of pinning the knight. The f file is also potentially a liability, but yeah, this knight striking on all these light squares is a bit of a monster as well, a, a pain. And we have bishop e7, which yeah looks as though it's inviting a discovered attack against the queen. What well, what is actually black doing here? Already it seems as though black hasn't got much counterplay at all, and it's it's only moved twenty. Uh, if King h8 as an example, then rook a e1. So white's got this very, very comfortable position, and just putting a rook here just shows what is black actually doing, just waiting around. Bishop d6 will happen, taking here and then taking here it will be a disaster. So if black does nothing, yeah, white's just going to build anyway pressure. So bishop e7, we have bishop d6, so wanting to take out that dark square bishop, hitting the queen. Uh, we have queen e8, and now this horrendous looking pin, rook f e1, rook f7, and now uh, bishop takes g6. So we see a lot of games of neural networks when a bishop is given up, uh, it's often the other color of the bishop which is celebrated. Here, after hg, it is a trap to play queen takes g6. Can you see what black would play here if I give you five seconds if this happened? Can you see five seconds? Black has check all checks. Black has a check here, winning the queen. So that's uh, bypassed with queen e5, intensifying the pin. King f8, yes, it looks absolutely miserable. Taking off a center pawn. So white is a pawn up. Black's pawn structure is diced. Look at this dicing of the pawn structure and that horrendous pin. It's virtually all over. Queen e5, putting more pressure on the pin. And now this nice build up with rook e3 trebling on the e file black is helpless here with this trebling but okay rook a7 offering a little bit more resistance and now the nifty move queen g5 uh, but <laughs> clearly it's it's it can't even take because it's, it's actually legally pinned against the king it's pinned two ways that bishop crossfire of a pin queen d8 and here now queen h4 threatening chatmate in one we have king e8, bishop takes e7, and the game ended here. Yeah, it just looks like a complete disaster game. The game ended on move 31. Uh, let's see what would happen if rook a takes e7, for example. Check, queen takes g7, and scooping up the g6 pawn, and then this would be just horrendous leading to, to example for, for mate here with the knight actually controlling an escape square so really really crushing stuff and the other way doesn't help either check and just picking up the queen the knight controlling d7 really doesn't help black at all so a real crush there against richard Poe. it's just incredible that michael Adams plays these games which it seems even by move 30 opponents are often helpless with the black pieces uh, so I thought very very interesting game to check out. If you enjoyed it and got something from it, uh, 
then check out uh, the Bitly link there if you want to play me or other YouTubers. So Bitly, two capital Y, small V, small A, five capital M, capital B, like five megabytes. All the link in the description. So I hope you enjoyed this one as well. The fantastic Michael Adams at the British Championship 2019 this year. Really stunning games. Okay, thanks very much.